Hi, I'm Erica, also known as Wild Food Girl, and this is a presentation on Curly Dock and all the other docks and how to identify them and use them for food. This guy is one of our many species of dock. You may have heard of Curly Dock. That's the, the, the weed that most people are aware of when they think of dock. But again, we have many different species of dock and they can all be used similarly. Common features of dock. Um, dark green leaves, rubbery feeling. And where the leaves attach to the stem or before the stems are there where the leaves are at the base, they're wrapped in this white papery sheath. And when fresh, the sheath contains clear slime in it. So we'll see that in a minute. But this is, um, these are the stalks of last year and they tend to be a rust color. Um, and the, the seed heads, which we'll see in a minute, are also rust colored. So hopefully you've seen a plant that looks like this before. Okay, um, the new leaves unroll sideways, and those are the ones that we're going for, for leaf eating. But you can eat the young leaves as they're unrolling, as well as the leaf stalks. Um, that are attached to them, as well as the young flower stalks peeled, raw or cooked. So let's keep going. Oh, I wanted to say that was another plant that's high in oxalates, like the lamb's quarters. So once again, if you are avoiding spinach, this might be the one that you would avoid. But I included this picture. This is a housing development in the, in the Boulder area in Colorado. And these big species of dock are just dotting the hillside. These, these were a little dry. So if you get to them a little later when it's been dry out, um, there you won't find them in as good a shape and you might see that they have beetles in them. But you would, this is a later, later in the season picture of our local docks. So the greens are popping up at the base, but the rusty, rust red, seed heads and stalks are clearly visible. So dock peaks in the spring. That's the peak season to get the greens, but it often also has a resurgence in late summer or fall if there's been moisture. So that's what's happening here. And I did go to the base of that plant and collect leaves to eat. So just uh, another look at the seed heads before we go on to the parts that you would eat. So this, this is kind of what it looks like. Dock seed heads usually turn rust red while the rest of the plant is still green in the middle of summer. Another identification feature. And these are the fruits close up. So this one has, um, these fruits contain within them a three-sided seed that looks like a buckwheat groat, but this little red thing is not the seed. That's called a tubercle. It's this little corky thing on the outside of the fruit. Some docs have that, some don't. And that's how you can tell, that's part of what you use to tell one species of doc from another. Curly dock has three of these um, that are different sizes. This one is, I suspect this one is indeed curly dock. So named for these um, leaf margins, if you can see my mouse, that are kind of like curly kale. So that's a good identifier too. It looks kind of like kind of like curly kale. This one, um, this one is called willow dock. It has really narrow leaves. And, and this one is also edible. It takes a little more time though to harvest, to harvest new leaves that are just unfurling because they're just smaller. This is a species of dock in the Colorado and Utah mountains called dense flower dock. Most docks have a single tap root underground, but this guy has a rhizome, a horizontal creeping rhizome. So you'll often see it in these huge colonies. And this dock can also be eaten. So if you're hiking in the back country, especially when the new leaves are coming out, this would be one that you could gather and eat. And this guy is bitter dock. Bitter dock has kind of more textured leaves and often has these reddish midribs. It's a little more bitter than other species of dock, but this one's very common in the Eastern woodlands. Um, I think I took this picture at my parents' house in Connecticut. Okay.
Okay, what are we collecting on the dock? We are looking, I, I walked up to this lush rosette and what I'm looking for are the leaves in the center of the rosette, which are just starting to unroll sideways or just finished unrolling sideways. Those are what I would use to cook and eat. Now you can eat them raw. I would do a pesto, but I think they're a superior vegetable cooked. So here's another picture on the right of, the, of a dock leaf unrolling. Like that's at a great stage to gather it. And when you gather it, um, you're gonna, well, you'll see in a second, you're gonna, this paper filled sheath is gonna have slime on it. It's gonna feel slippery. So you can gather this whole thing from the base and then remove this sheath. This one might be wrapped up with an emerging stem. You can eat those with it. So don't worry about that. And here's another look at the curly leaf margins. Now this leaf has just unrolled, but you can kind of see these stretch marks on the leaf as my friend Sam Thayer puts it in his entry about docks in his book. And that's still kind of at a good stage for eating. So from rolled up to just recently unrolled, but still has stretch marks, usually a lighter green shade of leaf. And again, take this whole stock with it because that's part of the vegetable. Here's another picture of that sheath with a nice, nice leaf that I gathered. And here's the slime. I used to think this slime, you can see it dried on the leaf and you can see it in my hand. I used to think that was like, at least on the leaf, I used to think it was slugs had been all over the leaf. No, that's part of the plant. And this slime, in fact, is um, nice for calming the stings of stinging nettles and bug bites. When the dock leaf is fresh, you're going to get that slime. So it's a good indicator of a quality vegetable. When it starts to be a little older, the slime dries out, the dock leaf gets a little more uh, tough and strong tasting. So we really are aiming for those young leaves. They don't have to be small, but they should be young and recent. And you could find this plant, you know, from low elevations to high elevations. Okay, so here are some that I gathered. And, you know, before I use them, before I cook them up, I'm going to remove those papery sheets. Dock leaves do well um, long cooked. So I like them in soups or back when I was a meat eater, they were really nice in uh, with a ham hock and some onions, you know, in a crock pot for many hours. So, but even, even without the meat, of course, you can do a long cooked in a broth. I like how that softens them. You can see how they turn a little gray green when you cook them. Um, they're good sauteed with onions, you know, then you can throw them into anything, a quiche, eggs, so forth. Now, I sometimes, you know, I have some like younger ones on the side here that I gathered, but in this batch, you can see that I actually gathered some more mature leaves. And I will gather more mature leaves as long as they have not started having a, like a red spotting or a lot of insect holes. I'll either even gather them from the stem because I use them to wrap a filling. It used to be rice and meat and now it's you know, rice and beans. And this is, you know, if you go to Europe and Asia, there is a tradition in, in Greece and in the, um, Balkan countries of wrapping food in leaves and cooking it. So you might be familiar with stuffed grape leaves. Um, in Poland, they make guampkis, which my Polish grandmother always made, and she always used cabbage leaves. Um, but I, I read a very interesting ethnobotanical paper that talked about how dock is one of the many leaves that have been traditionally used for these type of festivity dishes. So for this, then I would spoon on a tomato sauce, which is sweetened with some chunked apples and with onions in it and bake it for about two hours. Um, I, you know, to prepare for, the, to wrap these, you drop the leaves in boiling water for like two minutes and then pull them out and then wrap your stuff. That's actually part of a longer class on edible weeds. So if you're interested in watching the whole class, please come visit my website at wildfoodgirl.com. I also now have a membership program where you can watch all of the classes that are currently up there, as well as the new ones 
happening this year um, for one low price. So it's called WFG Learn, and I hope you'll check it out at wildfoodgirl.com. Thanks so much.